Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're returning to the topic of the Psalms and their meaning. Now, a brief disclaimer before getting into this psalm. The Psalms will be numbered differently in different translations of the Bible. This is a very, very old discrepancy, and to help clear things up, I'll be explaining what number the psalm has in the Dewey Reigns Bible and in the Revised Standard Version. However, the episodes themselves will list psalm numbers as they're given in the douay Rames Bible. Sorry if this is confusing. Anyway, this is Psalm 63 in the douay Rames Bible, but Psalm 64 in the RSV. Unto the end, a psalm for David, another of David's psalms. Hear, O God, my prayer when I make supplication to thee. Deliver my soul from the fear of the enemy. A plea for courage from God, a.k.a. the virtue of fortitude. Thou hast protected me from the assembly of the malignant, from the multitude of the workers of iniquity. God protected me from the many evildoers I've run into. For they have wetted their tongues like a sword, they have bent their bow a bitter thing, to shoot in secret the undefiled. They will shoot at him on a sudden, and will not fear, they are resolute in wickedness. My enemies are very, very eager to cause harm to decent people. They'd even be willing to shoot a good man without warning. They have talked of hidden snares. They have said, Who shall see them? Evildoers set up traps for decent people, to hurt them or steal from them. In the case of a hidden trap, the question about who would see it implies both that the evildoers expect to get away with their crimes, and also that they expect their traps to be very effective at catching people, since the people won't see them coming. They have searched after iniquities. They have failed in their search. Not that they searched for a means of sinning and failed to sin, but rather that they searched for a means of getting ahead in life by sinning, and their evil plans were thwarted. Man shall come to a deep heart, and God shall be exalted. A deep heart, in this case, means that men think deep thoughts in an attempt to come up with an evil scheme that won't fail. However, they won't succeed at that, and God will get the glory, not them. The arrows of children are their wounds, and their tongues against them are made weak. In the same way that an arrow fired by a child will rarely have the power to kill, so the attacks of evildoers can't cause any harm that God can't undo. Even their words can be easily undermined by the power of God's truth. All that saw them were troubled, and every man was afraid. People who passed by were horrified by the faith that God allowed the evil schemers to suffer. And they declared the works of God and understood his doings. By seeing the fate of the evil schemers, people were convinced to turn away from evil and worship God. The just shall rejoice in the Lord, and shall hope in him, and all the upright in heart shall be praised. People who care about justice will derive their hope from God and celebrate when he brings good things about. Not only that, but good-hearted people will receive more appreciation during the good times that God brings about. Like some of the earlier psalms, this is an appeal to God for justice and mercy against evil adversaries. It contains descriptions of the actions of impenitent sinners, puts those actions in perspective relative to God's ability to repair the damage caused by them, and finally, predicts repentance and worship for God in response to his choice to show mercy to his faithful. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.